Hi everyone, my name is Alexey Halebov and today we are going to talk about diffusion in general and particularly about lipid diffusion and henderson hasselbalg equation. And first, let's see, what does it mean diffusion? Diffusion or molecular diffusion is a thermal motion of all particles in liquids or in gases at temperature above the absolute zero. And as you know, diffusion explains the net flux of particles or molecules from a region of higher concentration to the region of low concentration of these particles. And once the concentration becomes equal, the molecules or particles continue to move, but since there is no concentration gradient. Few forms of diffusion are present. It is water diffusion and lipid diffusion and also present facilitated diffusion. And before we will talk about henderson hasselbalg equation, I would like to tell you a few words about each type of diffusion. And first type, it is a water diffusion. And in whole organisms, water diffusion or aqueous diffusion occurs within the largest aqueous compartments of the body, like an intestinal space, like a cytosol and other compartments. And across epithelial membrane tight junctions, and the endothelial aligning of blood vessel through the aqueous pores. Facilitated diffusion is the second type of diffusion. It is the process of spontaneous passive transport of molecules or ions across the cell membrane with the help of specific transmembrane integral proteins. And as other types of diffusion, facilitated diffusion does not directly require ATP energy. Facilitated diffusion differs from water diffusion in several ways. First, the transport relies on molecular binding between the cargo and the membrane embedded channel or chloride protein. Second, the rate of facilitated diffusion is saturable with respect uh, to the concentration difference between the two phases, unlike free diffusion, which is linear in the concentration difference. And third moment, the temperature dependence of facilitated transport is substantially different due to the presence of an activated binding event as compared to free diffusion where the dependence on temperature is mild. And the last type of diffusion is the lipid diffusion. And this lipid diffusion is diffusion through the lipid cell membranes, diffusion through the lipid bilayer. The lipid diffusion depends on relatively high lipid solubility of drugs and ionization of drugs uh, may markedly reduce their ability to permeate membranes. Therefore, we should understand that lipids mean cell membranes and water means intracellular and extracellular space. And as you understand, many drugs are designed to be lipid soluble for better permeation. We should remember that water is a polar solvent and lipids, especially oils or lipids of cells membrane, are non-polar compound. And polarity of compounds means that uh, these molecules are charged, they have a charge or they are ionized. Lipid aqueous partial coefficient determines how readily the molecule moves between aqueous and lipid media. In the physical sciences, a uh, partition coefficient is the ratio of concentrations of a compound in a mixture of two immiscible phases at equilibrium. This ratio is therefore a measure of, of the difference in solubility of compound in these two phases. So, lipid aqueous partition coefficient is a measure of solubility of drugs in lipids and in water. And therefore, partition coefficient measures how hydrophilic or hydrophobic a chemical substance is. As we know, most drugs are weak acids or weak bases. For example, weak acids is aspirin or thiazide or loop diuretics, and uh, morphine or local anesthetics is the weak bases. And at the weak acids or weak bases, when they become present in fluids or living organisms, they dissociate in case of weak acids and they accept proton in case of weak bases. So, they become ionized or non-ionized or charged and not charged because these molecules or drug molecules contain chemical 
groups that can be ionized. And look at the left side, where A for acids and B for bases. You see non-ionized form or uncharged form of acids that lipid soluble and better penetrates lipid membranes. And at the right side you can see ionized or charged form of acid that is water soluble and better renally cleared. And weak acids become ionized or charged better in alkaline environment. And after dissociation weak acids produce negatively charged conjugated base of an acid and hydrogen ion. In case of weak bases, as I say, they are proton acceptors. So they are molecules that able to accept hydrogen protons and become ionized or exist in charged form. And look at the left side, you see ionized or charged form of base or protonated form. And this form better renally cleared. And at the left side, you can see uncharged form or deprotonated form that better penetrates through the lipid membrane. And now we should understand that weak acids and weak bases are molecules, especially we are talking about drug molecules, which gain or lose electrical charge. And their charge or ionization depends from the pH of the environment where they are present and also depends from the pKa. It is the pH when 50 percentages of drug present in ionized form and 50 percentages of drug present in non-ionized form. In other words, depending on the pH, ability to move of these molecules from aqueous to lipids or vice versa varies from the pH and the pKa value. And only non-ionized form of drug able to cross or able to penetrate biomembranes. An ionized form is better renally excreted because this form better water soluble. How you can easily memorize this conception? Just think about acids. And you know that acids produce acidic environment, environment with low pH. And acidic environment is very rich to hydrogen ions. And if we have environment that rich to hydrogen protons, uh, it is very difficult to put more in this environment because we have a lot of them already. And this means that dissociate from acids in case of uh, acidic environment is difficult, but much easier in case of alkaline environment because we have less amount of protons. In case of bases, it is much easier to accept proton when we have a lot of hydrogen protons. And we have a lot of protons in acidic environment, so acids becomes more ionized in alkaline environment and bases becomes ionized in acidic environment. But let's come back to Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. The ratio of lipid soluble form to water soluble form for weak acids or weak base or ratio between ionized and non-ionized forms is expressed by Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. This equation helps uh, us to predict how many of drug will be present in ionized form or in charged form and how many of drug will exist in uncharged or non-ionized form. And for predicting how much of drug appears to be in either of two forms, we need to know pH of the environment and drug's pKa because each drug has its own pKa value. And also we need to know is drug weak acid or weak base. And in most cases, you will have drugs pKa value, and you should just use this value for calculations and to answer questions. And now you can see this equation, you can see henderson hasselbalch equation, and you can see that at the left side we have 10 in degree pH minus pKa, and at the right side we have ratio between ionized and non-ionized forms for acids, and between non-ionized and ionized forms for bases. You can see this difference at the left side of equations. You can see pH minus pKa. If the difference becomes negative, we should think about acidic environment. And if the difference is positive, uh, we're thinking about alkaline environment for the drug. And now let's make a calculations with these equations. So first situational task. We have meperidine, basic drug with pKa equal to 8. The question is, what percentage of drug will be in absorbable form at the pH equal to 6? 
absorption means penetration through the cell membrane, and we have this cell membrane. Also, we remember two forms of weak acid and weak bases, ionized form and non-ionized form. Ionized form is unable to penetrate through the cell membranes, and non-ionized form penetrates very well. Non-ionized form, also absorbable form. So, we have a basic drug, and we will use henderson hasselbalch equation for bases, where in numerator we have unprotonated form, for bases unprotonated form means uncharged form, and in denominator we have protonated form, and for bases protonated form means charged form. We have 10 in degree pH minus pKa equal to ratio between unprotonated and protonated forms. Let's use our values and calculate ratio. pH is 6 and pKa is 8. And 10 in degree 6 minus 8 equal to ratio between protonated and unprotonated forms. 6 minus 8 will be minus 2. So we have 10 in degree minus 2 equal to ratio between unprotonated and protonated forms. 10 in degree minus 2 will be 1 over 10 in degree 2 or will be 1 over 100. So, 1 over 100 equal to ratio between unprotonated and protonated forms. In other words, we have 99 percentages of drug that present in protonated form and 1 percentage of drug in unprotonated form. And as we're looking for non-ionized form or absorbable form, the answer is 1 percentage. If you're a little bit confused how to calculate these percentages, look at that. We have one part of drug in unprotonated form and 100 parts of drug in protonated form. Total amount of drug is 101 parts. So we can use proportion for calculations. 101 parts is 100 percentages, and one part is x. Therefore, x equal to 100 multiplied by 1 over 101, that equal to 0.99, or approximately 1 percentage. Now let's complete another example. The drug is a weak acid with pKa of 5.0. Assuming a pH of 8 in the urine, approximately what percent of drug will be in a form that can be rapidly excreted? Excretion means inability to permeate through the cell membrane, and we have this cell membrane. Also, we remember two forms of weak acids and weak bases, ionized form and non-ionized form. Ionized form is unable to penetrate through the cell membranes, and non-ionized form penetrates very well. As we have filtration in the nephron, and both forms of drug are filtered in the urine, rapid excretion will be for ionized form, because non-ionized form will penetrate through the membrane, and will be reabsorbed back. So, we are looking for ionized form of the drug. We have a weak acid, and we will use henderson hasselbalch equation for acids, where in numerator we have unprotonated form, for acids unprotonated form means charged form, and in denominator we have protonated form, and for acids protonated form means uncharged form. The pH is 8, and we have 10 in degree 8 minus 5, equal to ratio between ionized and non-ionized forms. We have 10 in degree 3, equal to ratio between ionized and non-ionized forms, and if we rise 10 in degree 3 or other degree, we must put as many zeros as the degree. In this case, we must put three zeros. We have positive value of degree, and finally we have ratio 1000 over 1, equal to ratio between ionized and non-ionized fractions. So, we have 1000 parts of ionized forms, or 99.9 percentages, and one part of non-ionized form, or 0.1 percentage. Again, how to calculate these percentages? We have total amount of drug, ionized and non-ionized form, that equal to 1001 parts. So, 1001 parts is the 100 percentages, and 1000 is x. Therefore, x equal to 1000 multiplied by 100 over 1001. That is 99.9 percentages. Third example. Ampicillin is a weak acid with pKa of 2.5. What percentages of a given dose will be in the lipid-soluble form in the duodenum at a pH of 
4.5. Again, we remember two forms of weak assets and weak bases, ionized form and non-ionized form. Ionized form is unable to penetrate through the cell membranes. It is a water-soluble form and non-ionized form penetrates very well. This form is lipid-soluble and we are looking for lipid-soluble form or for non-ionized form. Ampicillin is a weak acid drug, so we should use henderson hasselbalch equation for weak acids, where 10 in degree pH minus pKa equal to ratio between ionized and non-ionized forms, or equal to ratio between unprotonated and protonated forms. So, pKa is 2.5 and pH is 4.5. We have 10 in degree 4.5 minus 2.5 equal to ratio between ionized and non-ionized forms, or 10 in degree 2 equal to ratio between ionized and non-ionized forms. 10 in degree 2 is 100 over 1, as we have positive value of degree, equal to ratio between ionized and non-ionized forms. One part means one percentages, and 100 parts means approximately 99 percentages. So 99 percentages of drug will be in water-soluble form. Also, we have 101 parts uh, of drug that equal to 100 percentages and 100 parts that equal to x. And with proportion, we can calculate x as 100 multiplied by 100 over 101, and we have 99 percentages. Another very interesting example for calculation. We have medications taken orally, like sertalin, that basic drug with pKa 9.5, Diazepam, basic drug with pKa 3. Myodaron, weak base with pKa 7.4. Theophylline, weak acid with pKa 7.4. And ibuprofen, weak acid with pKa 4.8. Which of the following drugs will be concentrated inside patients' gastric cells? As you can see, we missed one important point. We don't have pH value. And let's assume that stomach pH will be 2 or even 1. So, we have next model with two biomembranes. At the left, you can see stomach lumen with pH 2 or with pH 1. At the central part, you can see gastric cells, as we are looking for drug that will be concentrated inside gastric cells. And let's assume that pH inside cell is neutral and equal to 7. And at the right side we have blood with pH 7.4. So, we have three basic drugs. And we have henderson hasselbalch equation for weak bases. That looks like 10 in degree pH minus pKa equal to ratio of uncharged form to charged form. Or unprotonated form or non-ionized to protonated form or ionized form. And this ionized form, also water-soluble form, and non-ionized form or unprotonated form for bases is lipid-soluble form. So, in the stomach we deal with absorption. And as we remember, only a lipid-soluble form of drug or non-ionized form can penetrate through the lipid membrane. Also, let's remember that weak bases become ionized in acidic environment. Let's calculate ratio between unprotonated and protonated forms for diazepam, because diazepam belongs to bases with lower pH in our case. Let's assume that stomach pH is 1, and we have 10 in degree 1 minus 3, equal to ratio between unprotonated and protonated forms. We have 10 in degree minus 2, equal to ratio between unprotonated and protonated forms, and we have 1 over 100, as we have a negative degree, equal to ratio between unprotonated and protonated forms. And we have 99 percentages of protonated form or ionized form that cannot penetrate through the cell membranes. So all basic drugs will not be even absorbed due to the high ionization and only insufficient amount of these drugs will penetrate to the gastric cells. We have remaining two drugs that weak acids drugs. And we have henderson hasselbalch equation for weak acids that looks like 10 in degree pH minus pKa equal to ratio between ionized and non-ionized forms. And we have two acids 
And let's calculate ratio between ionized and non-ionized forms for ibuprofen. It will be 10 in degree 1 minus 4.8, that equal to ratio between ionized and non-ionized forms. And for easier calculations, let's assume that 4.8 is approximately 5. So we have 10 in degree minus 4 or 1 over 10,000, equal to ratio between ionized and non-ionized forms. So we have 10,000 parts of non-ionized form of ibuprofen. And theophylline also belongs to weak acids with greater pKa. And this means that degree of lipid solubility will be higher than for ibuprofen. So both drugs, theophylline and ibuprofen, very well penetrate through lipid membranes from acidic environment of stomach lumen inside gastric cells. And what we have inside gastric cells where a pH is 7? For theophylline we have 10 in degree 7 minus 8.8. .8. And let's assume that 8.8 .8 is approximately 9. So we have 10 in degree minus 2 equal to ratio between ionized and non-ionized forms. And 10 in degree minus 2, it is 1 over 100, that equal to ratio between ionized and non-ionized forms. Or 1 percentages will be in ionized form, and 99 percentages will be in lipid soluble or non-ionized form. And this moment means that theophylline very well penetrates from gastric cells to the blood. And also this moment means that theophylline will not be accumulated in gastric cells. But what about ibuprofen? The pKa for ibuprofen is 4.8, and we have 10 in degree 7 minus 4.8. Let's assume that 4.8 is approximately 5, equal to ratio between ionized and non-ionized forms. And we have 10 in degree 2, equal to ratio between ionized and non-ionized forms. And we have 100 over 1. As we can see, only one percentage of ibuprofen will be able to penetrate to the blood, because only one percentage will be present in lipid soluble form, or protonated, or uncharged form. 99 percentages of ibuprofen will be ionized or water soluble in gastric cells, and will not be able to penetrate to the blood through the lipid membrane. So, as you can see, only ibuprofen will be concentrated inside gastric cells. This is so-called ion trapping phenomenon. And last example. Let's assume that we have weak base drug with pKa value equal to 8. And we have two compartments, and these two compartments are separated by a lipid membrane. Also, we have volumes and pH of compartments, and left compartment has volume equal to 2 liters with pH equal to 6, and right compartment with pH equal to 7. And our drug has been introduced into this system. At equilibrium state, concentration of drug in right compartment is equal to 10 mg per milliliter. Let's try to predict total concentration of drug in the left compartment. So, we have a basic drug and we will use henderson hasselbalch equation for basis. 10 in degree pH minus pKa is equal to ratio between unprotonated form and protonated form. And we have pKa value that is equal to 8. And we have pH of the right compartment. So we can write 10 in degree 7 minus 8 is equal to ratio between unprotonated form and protonated form. And we have 10 in degree minus 1 or 1 over 10. And 1 over 10 is equal to ratio between unprotonated form and protonated form. Let's remember that only lipid soluble fraction able penetrate biomembranes and in equilibrium state for diffusion we have movement of particles but concentration gradient is absent for them. So the concentrations of lipid soluble fractions of drug in left and right compartments in equilibrium state will be equal. And we know total concentration of drug in right compartment, and we know that only one part from 10 will be in lipid soluble form, or 10 percentages approximately. And we can see that concentration of lipid soluble fraction will be 10 percentages from total concentration, or 1 mg per milliliter. So this same concentration will be in left compartment for lipid soluble fraction. 
But this concentration is not a total concentration of drug in the left compartment. What we have for left compartment? 10 in degree pH minus pKa is equal to ratio between unprotonated form and protonated form for weak bases. We have 10 in degree 6 minus 8 is equal to ratio between unprotonated form and protonated form. Or 10 in degree minus 2 is equal to ratio between unprotonated form and protonated form. We have 1 over 100 is equal to ratio between unprotonated form and protonated form. The concentration of lipid soluble form for left compartment is 1 mg per milliliter and concentration of water-soluble form or protonated form 100 times higher. So approximately total drug concentration in the left compartment will be 100 times higher and will be 100 mg per milliliter. I hope you enjoyed this video, put your likes and subscribe to the channel.